Hey guys, my name is Gabe Hernandez, Marketing Director for TRW, and I wanted to answer another question. Check the description below for an explanation on all these cameos. This week's question comes from Becky. She wants to know how to get people from rural areas to make a purchase. Quick side note, I'm from New Jersey. The word rural was never in my vocabulary. I don't think I even heard the word until I was 21 when I moved to Virginia. So it could just be me, I could be acting insecure and odd, but I think I sound really weird when I say rural. Rural, 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 rural. Sorry, okay, point is. So if you're selling to people in a rural area, chances are you are living in a rural area. You know where the community hangs out, the events they attend, where they work, what they do after work. And this alone gives you a big advantage to the big city folk. You know enough about the demographic to know the types of designs they like, the styles they're into, the quirky sayings that they love to buy. Now what you need to do is get your product in front of them. Every town has influencers. Influencers are people who have the ability to sway people in their decision making, whether explicitly or inexplicitly. So a perfect example of this is Matt with his beloved AirPods. Matt and I have pretty similar lifestyles in the way that we view the world and business and gadgets and toys. Because of this, I value his opinion on things like gadgets and tools that make life a little bit easier. When I first saw him wearing AirPods to work, and by the way, I never thought AirPods were cool. When they first came out, I thought it was a stupid purchase. I thought it was a waste of time and a waste of money. However, the first time you walked into work with them, I asked him what he thought about them. Side note, Matt has no incentive to try and sell me AirPods. It's not like gets commission or cut from it at all. So he gave me his honest opinion, how it fit in his ears, the battery life, how convenient it is to use or not. He basically gave me his honest opinion. Because I respect his opinion on stuff like this, I've been wanting AirPods nonstop for the past three months. The only thing holding me back at this point is just justifying the timing and the cost to make that happen. Chances are I'll buy it sometime between the next couple weeks because I have a bunch of trade shows coming up and I really, really want them. To me and to many of you guys, I would assume Matt is an influencer. His opinion has weight to it. It's valued. So influencers aren't necessarily directly affiliated with the company, but those that are within that realm, within that demographic who are interested in stuff like that, value their opinions. So how does all of this tie into what we're talking about right now? Moms, local businesses, organization leaders, the PTA are all influencers within their community. So how do you sell in rural areas? You get in with these communities, you get in with these influencers and you offer them some free stuff. I'm not talking about giving them so much free stuff that it puts you in the hole for the month, just enough so that they wear it to their events, that they wear it out in public. And when people stop them, when people ask them where they got it, because they're an influencer in that area, People will value their opinions. People will value what they're saying. You're essentially making these little ambassadors for your brand, for your company. They're going out, they're wearing your stuff, they're walking, talking billboards. So by targeting specifically some of the influencers in your area, you're increasing the chance of somebody valuing the opinion that comes from them. And if they value that opinion, you increase the chances of that person coming to you in the future. So increasing sales in general within a rural area, it's like a land grab. It's like playing a game of Risk or Settlers of Catan. Let's say the school or the business or the organization that you want to start working with already has somebody producing products for them. Just because somebody is already there and has already claimed that territory doesn't mean that that relationship is set in stone. What you need to do as a business owner now is either work your prices out so that you charge less or increase the value of what they're getting with your company so that when they consider, when the time comes for them to consider which company they're gonna go with maybe for next year, you are now in the running. And when they consider the businesses that are in the running, your company can ultimately come out on top. And just like that, you've conquered that organization. And let's just say sometime after somebody's now trying to gun for your spot, you've always got to remain innovative. You've always got to stay competitive to always stay ahead of the game. Business is a battle. If you're in a big city, a lot of companies can coexist. If you're in a rural area, there's going to be a little bit more fighting for that customer's attention, for that customer's business. So get ready to fight. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you and your business. Use the comments below to ask any marketing question you may have. I'll either answer your questions in the comments or make a video about it in the coming weeks. Be sure to subscribe to receive updates every time we upload a new video. And I'll see you guys soon.